I've interviewed a lot of people in prison. Most people will tell you when they're behind bars that they're not guilty, even that they're innocent. What makes you different? It's true. It's absolutely true. Innocent is no part in it, no plan in it. Didn't know it was happening, didn't know it was going to happen, and didn't want it to happen. That is me. I am 100% innocent of Michelle's murder. Who is Leo Schofield? I like to say this, that I'm an ordinary man. Um, there's nothing extraordinary about me. The circumstances may be extraordinary, but I'm, I'm an idealistic dreamer. I always have been. Leo grows up in Fall River, Massachusetts. His family in the early 80s moves down to Central Florida, to Lakeland. Lakeland is located literally in between Tampa and Orlando. It's right on Interstate 4. It's the cornerstone of Polk County. If you go into Central Florida, it becomes very rural and very much like the Deep South. Leo immediately doesn't fit in. He's got the long hair. He's got that New England accent. It was very tough because I grew up in the project in Massachusetts from the age of seven, and, and I missed it as soon as we left. What had been your dream? What did you want to become? All my life, I wanted to be a rock and roll guitar player. That's all I ever wanted to do. We all liked music and used to get together and jam. He, he was a good guitarist, for sure. He had a cute smile, and I think that that would probably melt some of those little teenage girls' hearts. <laughs> In 1985, Leo met 16-year-old Michelle Somm. Unlike Leo, she was born and raised in Lakeland, Florida. Michelle was my older sister. My earliest memories about Michelle were that she was always happy. She was just so easy going, you know, and people just loved to be around her. I met Michelle in the fourth grade, and we became best friends almost instantly. Michelle was very playful, just a really fun person. She really liked to sing. She really liked music. One of her favorites was Pat Benatar. She would always be singing her songs. Jumping around, doing hit me with your best shot. Of course, that was the 80s. We always made time to goof around. What was your first impression of Michelle when you, when you met her? She was just absolutely stunningly beautiful. The first time I saw her, I thought, wow, she was always, always happy, always smiling. At what point did you fall in love with her? <laughs> that minute, that second I walked in the room. My first impressions of Leo, he was a little bit cocky, a little macho. He was very different from what I was used to seeing her with, a little more of the bad boy. Leo and Michelle get married in August of 1986. They've really only known each other about six months. Their wedding happened so fast that you know, I was like, wow, it kind of, it really surprised me. I was like, dang, man, this is like in high gear. Michelle and Leo's wedding was at a small church in Lakeland. It was beautiful. I was the maid of honor, so I was the only one that walked down with her. Oh, here's one. This was the most recent picture of her before she passed. I haven't seen it in a while, so I apologize. So this is the bouquet that I carried during Michelle's wedding. Her bouquet was just like this, only bigger. It was just a, a very good memory. This is your wedding picture. What do you see in this photograph? Ah, uh, the happiest day of my life, easily. I was so, so excited that day. I remember watching her walk down the aisle, dressed like that, thinking, I'm actually marrying this girl. This girl's gonna be my wife. I think Michelle and Leo struggled together, but they dreamed together about where they would be down the road. Leo and Michelle were living in this neighborhood called Cumbie Settlement. A lot of trailer parks. They were trying to make the ends meet. 
Leo didn't finish high school, he dropped out, and he started doing some kind of odd jobs. Michelle, like Leo, she dropped out of high school. She was a waitress. Leo was trying to be like a family man. Leo was used to driving his motorcycle around. Now he's got this Mazda station wagon. My arguments with Michelle were nine times out of 10 about the car. She didn't have a license, she had a permit, but I had to let her drive the car anyway. February 24th, 1987, the day that everything changed. Everything changed. The night before, Leo and Michelle had slept at the home of his bandmate, Buddy Anderson. Leo went to work, said goodbye to Michelle. She had the Mazda that Leo and Michelle shared. She was working at a new place called Tom's Restaurant. Michelle's shift is going to end around 8 p.m., and they agree beforehand that they're going to meet over at Buddy's house. She was supposed to meet me back there at 8 o'clock that night when she got off. But 8 o'clock comes, and there's no word from Michelle. It wasn't until 9.45 p.m. that you heard from Michelle? Right. 9.45, Michelle called. She told me she made $13 in tips. She got $3 worth of gas. Wanted to know if I wanted her to get something from McDonald's. And I said, no, just pick me up. He says, meet me over at Vince's house, another friend of theirs. So the last thing I got to say to her was, I love you. She said it back? Yeah, oh yeah. Then he starts waiting for Michelle. I expected her at no later than 10. 15 minutes pass, 30 minutes pass, an hour pass. Michelle has still not shown up. How much time needs to go by before you begin to start getting panicky? Hope you're here, so it's up there 53. Can I help you? Uh, yes, uh, I need to talk to somebody about uh, finding my wife. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.